I mean, Vladimir Putin is a very bad dude. He's a bad dude, okay? So a not if you ask Tucker Carlson, though. Tucker Carlson's here to glaze up Vladimir Putin. He's not an he's done enough. Tucker Carlson literally one executes executes Navalny, then turns his ass around and starts making fucking vlogs in, in uh Russia. What a fall off this guy has had. Long-standing feature, maybe the longest standing feature of Cold War propaganda in the West was the Soviet grocery store. No products, no choices, shoddily made things. And it wasn't actually propaganda, it was real. And you can look up the pictures on the internet if you want. So we thought it would be interesting to take a look at a contemporary modern day 2024 Russian grocery store, two years into sanctions. Here we go. All right, here we go. Dude, here's a here's a fucking YouTuber you can assassinate. Like, what do you mean? Putin's out here worried about Navalny. How about you fucking clear this up a little bit, you know? So I guess you put in 10 rubles here and you get it back when you put the cart back. I'm actually genuinely shocked that he had not seen this ever in his life. Like the idea that this is like a like a new phenomena for him is is so wild. What the fuck? So it's free, but there's an incentive to return it and not just bring it to your homeless encampment. Okay, this is the uh, grocery cart escalator. <laughs> this is designed, I'm figuring this out now, where the wheels don't move, they lock on the grocery cart escalator. Look, Ma, no hands. <laughs> Retail placement here is a little bit different. So you're, it's like walking through Macy's to get to Whole Foods. Okay, we've gotten through the perfume section to get to the grocery store. So we're gonna try and buy what a family of four would buy every week, and we're gonna see what the selection is, and we're gonna see what it costs. It seems like he's so sheltered, like he's never been to a grocery store before. Am I crazy? Or does it unironically seem like my man has never been inside of a grocery store before? Like, ha ha ha, it's crazy. They got groceries in the store. Now Russia is famous for its bread, which is one thing I can assess pretty well. The low carb lifestyle has not swept Russia. Uh, thank heaven, because they, I mean, look at that. It's fresh too. Look at that. Famously, American stores don't have what this is, uh, what we're looking at here. It's called bread. It's because the homosexual Marxists have made it illegal to consume bread products. That. Oh, come on. Mm. Unicorn and mini mills. All right. <laughs> Some kind of Russian wheat cookies. Ooh, we need coffee. Don't we? I don't know if this is sugar or flour, to be honest with you, but uh, it looks like a staple, so we should get it. It's a very good looking package. It's gotta be flour, right? And this is Russian wine. It's from Crimea, which not only has the warm water naval base, but also is the source of most of the grapes uh, in this part of Russia for wine. So it's apparently pretty good. Cheese puffs. You check out of a grocery store and you've got gum, razor blades, and candy. Actually, they hide the razor blades because we steal them. But these are all seem to be Western products. Mars, Twix, Snickers, Milky Way, Bounty, Gillette, Paul's Cough Drops, Mentos. It's pretty non-sanctioned to me, but what do I know? Damn, bro, he's snitching. Yo, yo, chill. Chill, dog. Why are you snitching on the fucking poor Russian motherfuckers that want to have a Snickers bar sometimes? Like, goddamn, dude. This man, this man out here dry snitching, dude. CIA man never changes. Yo, seriously, bro. Let the fucking dudes. It ain't their fault. <laughs> they didn't fucking invade Russia. Vladimir Putin did, you know? Let the fucking Russians staying at home eat Snickers every now and then. I went from amused to legitimately angry. Um, so we were guessing what this oh, would I cost. Oh, invade Ukraine, obviously. Cost everybody here from the United States by the groceries. And we didn't pay any attention to costs as we were just putting in the cart what we would actually eat over a week. And we all came in around 400 bucks, about 400 bucks. Um, it was $104 US here. 
And that's when you start to realize that ideology maybe doesn't matter as much as you thought. Corrupt. Bro, what are you saying? That's so crazy that he just, dude, 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 are you fucking on crack? Did you just point to Russian grocery prices as a good thing that we must have in America? This motherfucker, I can't, I don't want to be like a, I don't want to, <coughs> I don't want to be like one of those guys on Twitter that you hear all the time or like, actually what you are describing is deflation. But it's so weird. Like, do you know what the wages look like in Russia, my boy? What the fuck are you saying? Bro, he's literally like those lifestyle influencers that go to Bali, right? And they're like, hey, guys, um, here's, what, uh, here's what I do as a work-from-home uh, Instagram model. I moved to Bali. <laughs> and for $100, I live in a chateau with slaves. And it's like, yeah, no shit, dog. It's a much poorer country. The fuck do you mean? Moscow average wage is apparently 125,000 ruble. If what he bought is a week of groceries, spending one third of his wage on groceries. Corruption. If you take people's standard of living and you tank it through filth and crime and inflation, and they literally can't buy the groceries they want, at that point, maybe it matters less what you say or whether you're a good person or a bad person. You're wrecking people. The average monthly salary rush is like $750 or so. Four weeks of this will be over. $400, barely affordable with other monthly costs. Lives in their country, and that's what our leaders have done to us. And coming to a Russian grocery store, the heart of evil, and seeing what things cost and how people live, it will radicalize you against our leaders. That's how I feel anyway. Ra Dude, what is happening? That's so weird. Isn't he supposed to be like pro-America? I'm actually kind of confused by this. His Metro video is much better. Oh, he did a Metro video? Like, I, I genuinely don't understand what he's doing. Like, what is there a market for this in America? Are people in America like, yeah, we love Russia that much? Like, what? <laughs> is this treason? <laughs> least least insane liberal. No, it's not treason, brother. I mean, it sh this is not. He's doing what people claim you're doing. Like, I think that it is interesting. I think that it's interesting. Like, I would love to go to Russia and, and see how people are living and shit. One of the but um but overall it's like very odd that he's he's like look at how great things are dude there's nothing funnier i swear to god there's nothing funnier than looking at russia like modern day russia as a place that has no crime and no drugs and that you can like uh where things are very stable diehard maga guy sometimes like putin because he has trump aesthetics yeah Dude, by the way, everything he's doing in Russia, he could do in China, for the record. One of the ways you understand a society is through its infrastructure, the places where people gather, the places where they go to travel. You've got a lot of people in one place that tells you a lot about the people. So with that in mind, we're standing in front of the Kievskaya metro station and there's a train station next to it. Now, the metro station was built by Joseph Stalin 70 years ago. And the question is, how's it doing now, after 70 years? So we went into it to take a look, and what we found shocked us now that's not an endorsement of stalin who was bad obviously nor is it an endorsement of the current president vladimir putin you may not like him either but it doesn't change the reality what is this music what is this music that he's playing he's just walking into the metro station why is it like he's doing like a secret covert mission like Motherfuckers out here acting like he's Sam Fisher or some shit for walking into the metro. What? Quality of what we saw, or more precisely, didn't see. There's no graffiti. There's no filth. There's no foul smells. There are no bums or drug addicts or rapists or people waiting to push you onto the train tracks and kill you. No. That's cute though. That's like a cute little mouse. That's a cute ass rat, dude. Let the rat eat his fucking churros, man. Chill. It's perfectly clean and orderly. And how do you explain that? We're not even going to guess. That's not our job. We're only going to ask the question. And if your response is to shout at us slogans dumber than the slogans we used to call Soviet and mock, that's not really an answer. I, there's nothing I despise more than a fucking libertarian reactionary piece of shit going to a country with like good foundations as far as like public transit goes 
directly as a consequence of the USSR, mind you, and then simultaneously coming back to America and continuing his endless endeavors against public transit. It's like, you're such a fucking bad person, dude. You're a piece of shit. He's literally doing what Stalin intended with the Metro broadcast, Moscow Rod, wealth and infrastructure to show Russia strong, Lamau. Like, how are you going to fucking say that, like, public transit is, is gross and disgusting in America and not, and by the way, also simultaneously talking about, like, how there's no crime or homeless people in Russia is also, once again, I have to repeat this. There is definitely crime and homelessness in Russia. What the fuck is he saying? I don't, anyway. How does Russia, a country we're told is a gas station with nuclear weapons, have a subway station that normal people use to get to work and home every single day that's nicer than anything in our country? We're not gonna get, we're not gonna speculate. We're just gonna raise the question and wait for someone in charge to give us an answer. What is the answer? So we'll stop the lecture and let you take a look for yourself at what the Kievskaya metro station in Moscow, Russia looks like today, February 2024, in the middle of a war. Here it is. It, this is beautiful. I'm so mad at him. I'm so mad at he is not worthy. He is not worthy of gracing like one of the most incredible achievements of the USSR. You fucking piece of shit. You reactionary monster. You don't get to fucking glorify. You don't get to glorify the phenomenal achievements while simultaneously, while simultaneously shitting on fucking America doing anything of the sort. Gross. Disgusting. I'm dying. He's literally showing, oh my God, he's showing fucking USSR mosaic uh, propaganda. It's crazy. It's like, this is, what is happening right now? This is a video I would make. I would make this video with like the correct lessons to be learned from this which is that we should fund the arts. We should fund public transit. It's making me so mad. I accidentally ordered four blue margaritas on Hollywood Boulevard. Please come save me, Mr. Hassan. Only God can save you guys now. You're cooked. Imagine how bad he'd lose the shit if the U.S. government funded something like this in a major U.S. Uh, city. Yeah. Also, here's another fun fact. Okay. A lot of the U.S. A lot of the Soviet propaganda also featured like... Uh, also featured like... Because the USSR was massive and, and had... Uh, so many different ethnicities, even though there was Russification initiatives. Like, if if America made the equivalent of this kind of propaganda poster and put it inside of a metro, Tucker Carlson would literally talk about it for eight fucking episodes, being like, why are they putting gay people on propaganda posters? Why is there a black person in the propaganda poster? What's going on? Why is America so woke now? Why is it that the only thing we care about is wokeness in this country? Does this piece of art need to exist inside of a metro station? Do we have to constantly be reminded of the fact that there are black people in the country living alongside us? You know what I mean? It's like, dude, you can't... What are you doing? What, what the fuck are you doing? This is literally DEI woke shit that the USSR was doing. It's so dumb. A lot of Soviet art and a lot of Soviet propaganda was like this. Now, of course, he's also showing Russia's nicest metro station that they've compared to photos of our own worst ones. It's such fake rage bait bullshit. This passes Tucker's Bechdel test because the black guy is in the background. Yeah, I think that's why. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> At least they put the black guy in the background and not in the foreground, even though there are plenty of uh, posters from the USSR era with black people in the foreground as well. I I'm, I'm in awe of this guy being like, 
Look at the look at the incredible metro station that was built in Soviet Russia. Okay, in the USSR. Uh but don't take don't make any don't make any inferences to to anything beyond that. By the way, they put in the middle Ukrainian guy in a Vishivanka. It's just annoying. It's annoying to me because like modern Russia didn't build this. Capitalist Russia did not build this. Capitalist Russia, as a matter of fact, barely sustains it. Okay. That shit sucks. It, it makes me mad. It makes me so mad. Also, uh, the <laughs> not maybe it's not a surprise to many of you in here, but like the Ukrainian uh, Kiev metro station also looks like this. I wonder why. Once again, it's literally the skeletons of. It's like how uh, FDR and his New Deal built a pretty solid uh, foundation for American society to thrive off of that we still benefit from to this fucking day like a little bit of a, a little bit of central planning goes such a long goddamn way dude and to be fair we don't even we haven't ever stopped central planning we just changed uh who we care about in said central planning i stand by my assertion that neglected public infrastructure in the u.s self-selects as users compared to la transit almost exclusively used by people who either can't afford cars or make a conscious decision to choose transit Versus San Francisco Transit, where people of all walks of life choose to take the transit because it's generally well-funded and efficient, and it shows. Yeah, it's just like, I, I don't know. Will this, will this radicalize hogs into believing that public transit could be good? Maybe. I don't think so. Probably not. <sighs> yeah, BART is only great compared to other transit systems in the U.S. Yes. Megaphonics said San Francisco public transit is good in comparison to Los Angeles public transit, which is 100% correct. That's the saddest part about the story is that, oh, by the way, yeah, here it is. Uh, here's a station in the Kiev uh, metro system that serves Kiev, the capital city of Ukraine. The station was opened as a part of the first segment of the siretsko pecherska line on the 31st of de December 1989. It serves the transfer station... Um, the original design plans for the station call for a clean utilitarian structure typical of metro stations of that period. It's it's just, it's very, very frustrating. The Tucker YouTube videos are going to be a content goldmine, I think. I mean, he should just stay in Russia and keep pumping these bad boys out, I think. The following... I can't believe this got 1 million views in like two days, too. Um, for the last week straight, all the ads I got on Twitter are fucking Liver King. <laughs> I'm Italian. Every time I return a trip from Russia, I try to explain to my friends how much order there is in the city. There are many attractions and impressive buildings and the people are peaceful. I guess one of the biggest problems here in America is that even our big cities that are supposed to be like, I mean, even our big cities that are uh, very obviously uh, uh, massively wealthy have a shit ton of uh, uh, insecure economic insecurity and, and income and wealth inequality that shows that shows in the form of like uh you know homelessness everywhere that's the that's the major problem whereas like um yeah if you go to any tier one chinese city you will get this times a thousand obviously uh, a major difference there between a chinese tier one city versus like uh the chinese uh, countryside right a similar issue persists in uh in in russia as well and in many places Except in America, we don't even have like good propaganda uh, areas that we could show as like a as like a positive. I must say, I feel good in this weather. I ordered. Um, I'm embarrassed. I ordered a cheeseburger. Two. Che I ordered two cheeseburgers, large Coke, large fries, and a chocolate cake. We're back in the van. We've we've just come back from the Ursatz Moscow McDonald's. Tasty, that's it. And first the price, okay?
I'm losing my mind with him constantly comparing the prices in Russia to American prices. That's so funny. Now I'll admit, I have not been to a fast food place in quite some time trying to preserve my girlish. Tucker Carlson doesn't understand how, like, currency exchange rates work. Tucker Carlson doesn't understand how, like, in other countries, things are, especially food, is, like, going to be a lot cheaper. Obviously, wages are going to compare to the price of the food. I, I don't know... I don't know how to describe this to someone. Like, also doesn't make me feel good that I'm 54, so you probably shouldn't be eating that crap. But, um, so I'm not exactly current on the prices, but here's what it cost in Moscow 647 rubles. So that is exactly $7, $7.05, I think. And for that, we got two cheeseburgers, large fries, large cola, Coke knockoff. And a piece of chocolate cake. <laughs> I just couldn't resist. Is that healthy? No. I should say Putin banned GMO foods in Russia four years ago, um, which is interesting. I didn't ask about that. I probably should have. Uh, but so maybe we're in a little better shape. I'm not sure. Anyway, here's what we have for that. Let's first go to the fries. McDonald's most famous product of fries. All right. These are tasty, that's it, Siberian-owned Russian fries. Everybody knows what a McDonald's French fry tastes like, so it's not going to be hard to assess. Oh, that's excellent. Totally the same. Um, we just walked all the way a block in the snow back to the truck with these things, and they're still good. Okay. Yeah, uh, what matters is obviously the purchasing power parity in this situation. They ban go imports, and they certainly uh, still get imported. GMO produced in Russia is 100% fine. Americans genetically programmed to do car seat vlogs. That's so funny. Yeah, he has to do it in the car. Uh, it's just he is an American after all. Okay, fries are a winner. Now I got recognizable foods. Like every American has had a McDonald's cheeseburger. Okay, that's a Siberian cheeseburger in the husk of a McDonald's outlet, all right? Now, as in America, I'm not gonna open it up to see what's inside because like, you don't really wanna know. I'm just gonna eat it, all right, ready? Oh, excellent. This is so disrespectful. He's just spitting on the face of uh, an American institution, okay? This is the most un-American thing he's done. He could have fucking taken out Vladi Poo's cock and just sucked it on camera, and it would not be as treasonous as him biting into a fucking Russian burger and being like, wow, phenomenal. <laughs> Better than what you get in America. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. This is like this is disrespectful. This is so disrespectful. I'm getting patriotic, okay? He's, he's negatively polarizing me to be patriotic for America right now. Get the fuck out of here, man. Exactly the same. <laughs> My first thought is I should be not eating this shit. But I like it, and I think they have those little chopped onions like they do in the United States. All right, I'm going to finish that off camera because it's disgusting to watch a man eat. But before I stop, I'm going to go right to dessert. I'm not going to eat it. I'm just going to show you what tasty that's it serves in Moscow. I love the name though. The name is sick. Tasty. That's Piece it. Piece of chocolate cake. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna eat this in front of you either because that would be super degrading. And I'm not going there, even for my love of the internet. But I am gonna sniff. Who was this whole trip for? I'm so confused why he's riding for Putin in Russia. No, this is like 100. percent At this point, it's 100 percent pro-Russian propaganda. I think he's just trying to show America that like the sanctions aren't working, which is true. Um. Like it didn't, uh, it didn't work. And, and once again, I'm conflicted because like, there's parts of this, like the, the fundamentals that he is, is operating off of are, are very frustrating to me because he's like, he's a right wing Christian wasp nationalist. And he is a, he is a product of, of like wealthy literally the uh, CIA operatives like his father worked for the state department and then he's turning around and after spending his entire fucking career shitting on 
anything and everything that was like remotely socialist going to a country like Russia and showcasing public transit is disgusting to me. It's disgusting because you've, you've dedicated your entire professional career in America to make sure that Americans can never get a fucking touch of what he's showcasing. Yeah. Why do sanctions not work in Russia, but do in MENA, Libya, by the way? Um, why do sanctions not work in, in uh, Russia, but they do in, in MENA? Because uh, they still have oil and gas for the most part, and they already have those McDonald's there. But also, it doesn't even... What do you mean, MENA? Like, what are you talking about? They already have, like, uh, uh, trade relations. They have a connection to China, like a very solid connection to China. As far as, like, sanctions, though, I mean, you can make a video like this in Iran. You can make a video like this anywhere. You could literally go to Iran and go to, like, a, like a McDonald's-style burger joint and eat the burgers there and be like, look how fucking wonderful the burgers are. That doesn't mean that, like, uh, the sanctions don't harm the country, because they, of course, do. And even same with, like, uh, I would say it's okay to say you don't know, Hassan. It's okay. You don't have to shit on RU. Your libs won't stop calling you a Putin shill regardless. Wait, what do you mean? I'm not. I'm not shitting on Russia. I'm not shitting on Russia at all. I just said I would love to go to fucking... I would love to go to Moscow and, and look at the metro station. I'm saying I'm literally jealous that he gets to do this. I think it's awesome. But that's not because of Russia. Like, that is a, that is a Stalin-era Sovi uh, Soviet metro station that he walked into and then showed... Soviet propaganda mosaics that show like racial harmony, okay, that promote racial harmony and then presented it as a good thing. Everything he shits on in America, he's presenting as a good thing because, uh, you know, it's, it's, it exists in Russia. It's very frustrating. If anything, it is a demonstration that solid fundamentals when it comes to social safety nets and public transit and things of that nature, like, have staying power far after the country has been uh, uh, decimated by vulturous uh, capitalist bankers. You still have the remnants of, of something that was great. That's still working. It's not Russian propaganda. It's anti U S government propaganda. His entire shtick is explaining that the elites are doing everything they can to erode the standard of living for the white middle class. All the strip was about setting up the premise that even people in shitty Russia have it better than you because of Biden and immigrants. Probably this is fascist rage bait. Yeah, I mean, that's why he's, like, showcasing the wrong lessons, or he's showcasing the wrong shit. He presented the Kiev Sky a metro station just because of Kiev and the name of the station. There's a lot of new stations that were open in these last two years. Sniff it, which will give me some sense of its flavor, and then off camera, I'll assess and let you know. And that smells great. It smells great. So, look, I'm not saying one's better than the other. I'm just trying to let you know with life under sanctions, once Tony Blinken has written your country out of the civilized world, how do you live? Not bad. All right, I'm just finishing my Mick breakfast, which was really Mick lunch, and I gotta say it was Mick awesome. It really was the non-GMO version. <laughs> yeah, dude. Base Vladimir Putin eviscerated uh, GMOs in Russia.